apologize for posting this Q&A that late. This delay is almost embarrassing because it has to be 10k subs Q&A, but you guys are so fast that there are um, 21k of you now. Let me explain what happened. As a responsible person, I recorded Q&A immediately after I got 10k subs. I'm busy as usual and uh, I recorded Q&A on one of our shoots, just sat down, recorded it, but the guys were filming from the drone and I screwed the levels on my mic and I've realized that only when I finished recording. Oh, sh and then last week and a half or something amount of subscribers doubled, so let's just do it. Question number one. Did you attend film school? And if so, did you mess around a lot with VFX and motion desi design before attending school? No, I haven't attended any film schools or visual effects schools. I learned everything online. And yes, I certainly messed a lot with VFX and CG. Are you an introvert? That's a good question. People who know me says that I'm not. But I obviously know better. I'm a good actor, I would say. Even though I might not seem like introvert, it cost me a lot of energy to be who I am in public. Everything I said about introverts in my introverts video is related to myself. So the answer is yes, I am introvert, but I'm really good adopted introvert. When did you start with 3D? At what age? 3D in particular, I started at, I don't know, later than 18 i think initially i started my journey in photoshop i was doing absolutely different stuff not related with 3d in any way so what course can you suggest to attend to understand all fundamentals on how c4d works short tutorials on youtube are great for specific tasks but i would like to get a bigger picture and a personal question how long do you live in uk and where did you live in russia I have no idea about courses as such because I was always looking for specific answers for my specific questions. I always had a particular task in mind and I had to find solution to do it. That way I learned everything. But uh, lynda.com, cineversity.com, these resources post like a really big and comprehensive courses on all kind of softwares, so you might want to go and check it out. How long do you live in UK? I live in UK for five years and I never lived in Russia. I was born in a country called Latvia. It used to be in Soviet Union, so that's why I'm Russian. Do you have your own LUTs? No, I don't have my own LUTs and I don't use LUTs. I prefer to do everything manually because every project is unique and you want to achieve certain atmosphere in each so it's not that hard to grade log footage or any footage really especially in Adobe Premiere with adjustment layers it's just basically you don't need lots hey man want to ask what knowledge tools programs does it take to enter the cg industry example movie industry what does a film company look for through your tool set what programs does it require you to have to utilize in their workflow huh. well you kind of answered your question yourself in their workflow it depends on a studio you want to work with their workflow means that they will require certain tools from you. If it's a big studio, it's most likely will be Maya, Nuke, V-Ray, Redshift, maybe. Other companies will uh, require Cinema 4D, Octane. But as you asked about film company in particular, yeah, I'm pretty confident it will be Maya, Nuke, V-Ray, because it's industry standard and I think uh, this standard won't change soon. Can you make fusion tutorials too? What do you mean too? <laughs> Starting the basic stuff first. Well, I am teaching fusion and I'm showing basic stuff as far as I see it. Or you mean like do a dedicated tutorial about fusion basics. Yeah, I might do that. What is your opinion on Blender and do you think people should start out in Blender to get familiar with 3D related stuff? I am not familiar with Blender because I never worked in it 
but I've seen people creating absolutely amazing stuff in it. As well as I've seen a lot of amazing stuff from Maya, 3D Max and all other uh, 3D softwares. I know that Blender is free, that's a massive plus, but I also heard that its workflow is massively different from any other similar kind of softwares. So I guess if you would start in Blender, you should stick with Blender. But in general, it doesn't matter in which software you will start. Uh, 3D, CG, VFX principles are same across all the softwares. Texturing, modeling, basic knowledge pretty much is all the same. I've been learning Cinema 4D for a month. Should I keep learning materials from the native C4D materials or go directly to the Octane render? By the way, I have a MacBook Pro 15 inch. With MacBook, you should learn Cinema 4D native materials because it won't handle Octane, unfortunately. Octane bench score on MacBooks is ridiculously low, so I personally would suggest you to move to Octane, but for that you would need to change your hardware. I created a lot of stuff with Cinema 4D native material system and it was alright. See nothing wrong with it. What was one of the most challenging things you worked on? on a technical or personal level. Is there anything you consider a constant source of inspiration in your life? Okay, last last year I was uh, working on a VR project. It was uh, almost two minutes explanatory video that ha had to be in a full VR environment. The challenge there was that render was so long that my in-house render farm couldn't handle it, it would take ages, so we had to use external big render farm. And that was a pain. It was super stressful, not only because I had to negotiate about re-renders when certain mistakes appeared, client invested a lot of money into that render, so what happened was, when render was finished, I noticed that frames are flickering. One frame is looking one way and next frame is looking absolutely different. And and just to explain why was it so stressful, it was almost 10 grand uh, render. And when it finished I was like, bloody hell. Luckily the guys from the render farm, it was Rebus farm, French render farm, they were uh, really friendly and they helped to investigate what happened, was it the mistake uh, that was made on their end or on my end, I didn't prepare the scene properly. And it appeared that in some Octane materials I used Cinemas 4D's native uh, shaders and that caused the plot problems. They found that mistake and they said that nobody could actually know that it will affect the scene that way, so they can't kindly re-rendered whole that massive sequence for me for free. And the project was done. Oh, I think that was the most stressful project in my life. <laughs> As for constant source of inspiration in my life, well of course it's my little girl, my little daughter and also my work. I truly love what I do. I really enjoy learning new stuff. I'm excited about what I'm going to learn, what I'm going to create. At the moment I'm working on a really cool tutorial for you guys and uh, the opening video for it will be really cool. I'm excited about it. So kind of stuff I'm working on is inspiring by itself and it's really cool. And now I have another inspiration source which is YouTube. It's an absolutely unbelievable and unexpected discovery for myself. Never did I expect that I will be sitting here talking to you, talking with my camera and teaching people that way, that people will be so much interested in it. It's, it's really cool, it's crazy and I'm really passionate about it. What format are you uploading to YouTube? This quality is great. I'm not using any special formats, it's just regular H.264 from Adobe Premiere. Checkbox on render at my maximum depth, my maximum quality, maximum bitrate, that's it. What is the music in the beginning? You left that comment under my uh, Q&A and announcement video and that was this track. I'm not replying to any music requests in comments just because 
usually I don't have time to go back to the source files of that particular video, look what, what, what soundtrack I used and post it in comment. But you all can keep in mind that I'm using artlist.io. I think it's the best royalty-free music uh, website out there. I tried Epidemic Sound, uh, Audio Network, Music Bad, and all others. I'm still using Audio Network for commercial projects because these guys have a lot of mixes available, a lot of orchestral music, which I need a lot. Epidemic Sound. I have bad experience with them and I didn't really like their playlists. And Artlist.io is just something really exceptional. Just check it out. This website is amazing. And this is not a sponsored video by them. I'm using their ser service for my own money. I'm really impressed by the content they give out. When CGI starts to look real and natural, and natural from your side of view, textures, materials, motion blur, etc. And how long and for how long should you learn to get that photorealistic look? Artists learn till the end of their days. We never stop learning, that's the key. You, it's always it's always going up. When CG starts to look real and natural, when you consider it uh, real and natural, the best way to check it is ask your friends or your girlf girlfriend or any relatives what they think about your creation. If they go like, wow, is that a photo? Then obviously it looks real. If they go like, hmm, I can tell that's a plastic toy. Then it doesn't look real, man. I always ask my wife what she thinks about uh, my works. And uh, usually she's like, uh, I can tell that's a graphic and usually I'm blowing up saying well, come on that's because you know that it's graphics <laughs> next question is in Russian I will read it in Russian and answer it in Russian and put a translation on the screen but this will be a uh, one and only time I speak Russian on this channel Насколько важно активное участие в CG-тусовке, на твой взгляд, для профессионального роста? Это очень важно, потому что раньше я это недооценивал, а на самом деле люди, помимо своих работ и так далее, они постят а, постоянно какие-то вопросы, какие-то какие свои эксперименты. И просто прочитывая эти ленты в этих группах, ты запоминаешь решение каких-то проблем. Так что это мега важно участвовать в этих группах. Кроме этого, если ты сам что-то делаешь и участвуй, активно участвуешь в жизни этой группы, там заводятся новые знакомства, вы можете делать совместные проекты. Это круто. Какова была цель создания данного канала у тебя лично? У меня цели никакой не было. Я сделал это ради интереса, потому что хотел попробовать YouTube еще год назад даже полтора года назад, но никак не мог найти время. Попробовал ради интереса и не ожидал такого отклика у народа. Теперь мне это нравится. Откуда черпаешь вдохновение и идеи для личных проектов? Да, на самом деле не откуда. Я делаю всякую банальную, банальные всякие вещи. Вот, допустим, урок про uh, Octane Passes. Там чел человек с зонтиком и тучкой над ним. Ну, это же классика. У меня неплохо получаются роботы, а, спойлер, следующий урок а, будет с роботом. Вот роботы у меня хорошо получаются, я не знаю, откуда я черпаю это вдохновение, они просто получаются и все. Идешь по улице и внезапно рождается идея, или после просмотра какого-нибудь рила появляется желание сделать что-то похожее. Вот это, кстати, да, смотришь чужие рилы, иногда, иногда восхищаешься, иногда вдохновляешься, иногда думаешь, ну, как ты это сделал? И... Таким образом заряжаешься, мотивируешься, тебе хочется повторить, начинаешь э, копать эту тему. Да, так. Думаю, шанс получить ответ сейчас выше, чем при 100 тысячах подписчиков, поэтому решил узнать все и сразу. Не знаю, мне становится очень сложно отвечать на комментарии. Но спасибо за вопрос, Петр. Всем русскоязычным зрителям э, на русском я записывать уроки не буду, потому что аудитория у меня интернациональная, она не ориентирована на русскоговорящих. Английский язык интернациональный. Я живу в Англии, поэтому 
выбор языка даже не стоит. Это как бы очевидно. Я продолжу вести свой канал на английском, но я читаю все ваши комментарии. Спасибо большое. Вообще неожиданно, что это дошло до вас в России. И мне очень приятно, ребят. Спасибо. Could you explain how to get the sun in an HDRI like Greg Zal? Greg Zal's works are really cool, uh, really high-end ones, but there is nothing magical in them. I think you left that comment under my HD, how to create a HDRI tutorial. Well, that's exactly how it works. Just follow the steps I explained and you will get results like Greg Zal. The only advice I can give you is maybe go uh, with extreme dynamic range when you're capturing your panorama. That way you will be able to choose the best exposure and you will have all that data in there. What's the story about you? How did you start in motion design? Well, first thing is what I'm doing is not motion design. <laughs> I'm doing visual effects and computer graphics. Motion design is a slightly different thing. My first job in UK was as a motion designer, yeah. So the story behind me, in a nutshell, I started to mess with Photoshop when I was 14. By 15, I started to earn uh, some money, little. Over years, I really liked photography, so I started to take pictures, retouch them, and I wondered how would I add elements. So I started heavily manipulate pictures in Photoshop. And then I wondered how would I make them more real. I started to play with 3D, and then I realized I can animate that 3D stuff that I'm doing. That's in a nutshell what happened and here I am. Then we decided to move in UK and my first job was a motion design job in a local advertising agency. Then I left and we founded our own thing and now I started YouTube as well. Do you play video games? If yes, which ones are they? I don't play games unfortunately despite I have quite decent gear to do that. I just don't have time. But if I would play games, I'm a big fan of Diablo 3 and Tomb Raider. Really like adventurous kind of arcade games. When and how did you came with the idea to do what you do? I mean as a job and after that to share that knowledge and how did you start, which programs you used? What did you want to create first and where you at to do? 2D artist. I didn't came up with an idea to make it my job, it just happened, really. I wanted to be a lawyer or an architect, but design was the easiest way for me to earn money while I was still a teenager. By obvious reasons, I developed in this industry. When did I decide to share that knowledge? Already replied in this video. I, I wanted to try YouTube for a year and a half, and I just tried it for fun, made a big tutorial and that's basically it, didn't expect anything. YouTube is a really awesome platform to do really incredible things. I think a lot of huge stuff is ahead. So when I start, which programs I used? Um, Photoshop. Photoshop was my main tool, my main and only tool for a lot of years. I think about like five years at least. Then I started to play in uh, After Effects, then some 3D softwares, then 3D softwares and After Effects, then uh, 3D softwares and proper compositing tools. What did you want to create first? I wanted to create everything. I wanted to create Hollywood movies straight away and I was blowing out when it didn't turn out as I imagined. It's a regular thing. All that learning curve needs uh, rock solid patience and you just have to sit and do it again, 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 until it works out. Were you a 2D artist? Yes, I was creating logos, websites, illustrations, all that stuff at first. So yes, I was a 2D artist. Is your studio hiring? Yes. Mm. Mm. Spoiler, this will be one of my next videos. Any work recommendations, places to apply for a job? Graphic design visuals in the UK. London and LA are the places where most media questions are sorted. So whatever you're into, find a studio, try to apply for a job. This will be your best choice. Best non-GPU based C4D render in your opinion? No brainer, it's a V-Ray. Could you share a link compilation for resources that any 3D rookie should know? 
in video description I will leave a link to David Ariev's website. This guy kindly collects all the great artists, all the great resources, tutorials, knowledge databases, everything that is super duper useful is on his website. So link is in video description. Thank you, David. Best use of CGI visual effects in your opinion for a movie, any particular scene. Last year's any movie that comes out from Hollywood is bloody mind-blowing in terms of CG, so their work is always top-notch. But the one I particularly like is almost 10 years old, and you probably guess what I mean. Avatar. It's absolutely beautiful, the idea, the world they created, the story, and that intrigue they keep in us, because uh, more movies are coming. David Cameron is one of the biggest inspiration. Mind blown. This is the best movie ever. Any movie that made a mark in your childhood? Yes, uh, The Abyss. This movie has a, such a strong atmosphere. This is the proof of my introversion. Because I find the atmosphere in that movie so cozy. Still watching it from time to time. If you haven't seen it, check it out. If you could move anywhere to continue your creative process, where in the world would it be? It's a tricky question. I don't know. I love uh, jungles and sea, so it probably would be a mix. Maybe Thailand or Hawaii or something like that. That's my dream places. Any YouTube channel recommendations? CGI visual effects? Pfft, yeah. I designed with David Ariev motion designers community. They're sharing and gathering a lot of useful stuff. Other great artists are recording super duper tutorials for them. And also everything that I already mentioned in David Ariev's list. Coffee, tea. But yeah, I drink coffee too. <laughs> Which one was your latest tattoo? Latest one was this one. It's unfinished, I need to finish all my arms. I read a couple of really, really negative and uh, mean comments about my tattoos under my YouTube videos. Well, guys, what can I say? I'm not going to hide them because that's not what I did them for, right? I'm not a bank worker or something, I'm an artist. And I have that right to do whatever I want. If you don't like it, don't look at it. What camera do you use? Seem like high dynamic range. You left that comment under my Q&A announcement video and this video was shot on A7R2. My little best friend. Should I go in the movie industry or stick with the corporate industry? Please give me some suggestion. It's a really strange question, mate, because how can I answer what is better for you? It depends on you. What do you want to do? Do you want to participate in films shooting and do visual effects for films? Or do you want to shoot commercials? Or do you want to do motion graphics? Decide yourself and go from there. You should talk more about cinematography in your vlogs, like some tips. I'm really interested and will appreciate it. Hope you find and read this. I... um... Thank you, treat it as a compliment, but I don't think cinematography is my strongest side. It's my, it's one of my biggest hobbies, I would say. But maybe I will, who knows. <laughs> say about yourself, how you learned all these things and what's your ambition in life. I'm from Chennai, India. I just was passionate about it and just curious. And I use all possible resources that I could to find answers to find more information. That's how. What's your, what's my ambition in life? Ah, uh, that's really tricky question, really philosophical one, because it's, for many people, I think it seems like if, if, if the guy is so passionate about what he's doing, he's probably have a clear vision of where he's going. That's not always the case. I don't know. I'm just passionate about what I'm doing and I know that bigger things are ahead, but what they are, I don't know. I just know that I have to go further, it will be a long way, I, have, I will learn a lot more things, meet a lot more people, and that's all I know. That, that's my ambition. I'm excited about it, I'm going there. Can you teach us how to make a 3D environment in green screen with your favorite programs? 3D environment and green screen are different things, but I got what you meant. One of the next tutorials 
will be about green screen. Can you put videos on how to correct colors in a cinematic way, like your videos and thank you brother? That's again, I don't think color grading is my strongest side, but maybe I will because I definitely have several tips, tricks that I haven't seen any other filmmaker is mentioning in their tutorials. I find texturing of objects really difficult. Usually I just use materials, but I cannot get the result what I want with this method. I have tried to watch some videos of textures in Cinema 4D, but they all are really complicated. Could you make video about this and show your texture all the objects your way? It's, it's, it's tricky. Are you talking about Cinema 4D's native materials or Octane render? Because approach, uh, in these softwares will be different. To achieve more realistic results in Cinema 4D itself, you can drop materials on top of each other, create uh, cracks, scratches, and all that kind of stuff. For Octane, I've released a dedicated video about Octane materials that will help you understand how to achieve more realistic results. As for how I texture things, I'm taking pictures of real objects in real world and then transforming them into textures. I'm also using Substance Painter and Substance Designer, so I'm painting my models. Later in the year there definitely will be more videos about texturing and painting and especially Substance Workflow, Substance Painter, Substance Designer workflow and stuff. Ah, that's interesting one. I'm sure it's been asked of you before, but what's the story behind those jars in the sh on the shelf in the background? At first I assumed your background was composited backplate. Oh my god, these jars, they are legendary. Really, so many people asked about them. Okay. These are just jars from Ikea, guys. Uh, I would love them to be real, those fireflies. Uh, but they're not. Also, another question I have. Is your room real? Let's have a look. Yes, it is real. I have a lot of interesting things here. I collect different figures. I'm a big fan of Star Wars, so here's my Darth Maul model. Love it. Indeed, my room is real. There were so many questions about those jars in my room. I obviously filtered duplicated questions and stuff. I hope I answered everything that you had to ask. I think next Q&A will be on 50k or 100k. I don't know how far my YouTube channel can go. I'm excited of that journey. I'm really thankful to you all for your love, for your comments. I'm blown away by how well my videos are received. More to come. I'm working on a really cool stuff for you. Uh, ah, no spoilers, sorry. But if you like my videos, thumbs up. If CG and VFX is something you are into, you already know that you can find a lot of interesting info on my channel, so subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys, and I see you soon. Peace.